hello guys welcome back to yet another tutorial video of mine um thank you for your feedback and your comments and to those who subscribe to the channel i appreciate that all right today we'll be looking at um in this video i'll be looking at load balancing with ha proxy but before we get into the concept i would like to explain a few um, terms that we need to understand so the understanding of these concepts will help us to carry out the project successfully. Okay, the first I have here says um, HTTP headers. So what are HTTP headers? Uh, my definition says HTTP headers are the essential components of the H essential components of your HTTP, which means um, hypertext transfer protocol, and this is the protocol that is used for communicate shown between um, your web browser and the server so in simple terms um, http headers are just the code that transfer data between your web server and the client all right here is an illustration or a diagram to help you understand so when i open my computer and i type um, probably i type um, www.google.com what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to send a request to the server um, the server can be um, a single server or multiple servers um, so what this request contains is what we call a request header so this um, request I'm sending to the server will contain um, key value pairs that can provide additional information about the HTTP request I made so when the server receives my request the server now sends back a response to me and that response contains headers that have um, key value pairs that provide additional information about the response from the server. So HTTP headers can be grouped into the first one we have here is um, HTTP request header. So when you make a request like open your browser to browse, you are trying to um, solve the net. What you're doing, you're making a request. So whenever you type the URL into your browser address and you try to access it, your browser just sends um, HTTP request to the server. Um, this HTTP request header contains information like we already said. Um, it contains information in a text record form, which includes particulars such as. Um, so the request, the inf additional information will contain um, type of the browser you're using, um, the capabilities of and um, version of the browser that generated the request, then the operating system that you use in browsing. Um, so all those kind of informations are contained in the HTTP request header and also various types of outputs um, accepted by the browser. So all this um, information will be contained in the HTTP request header. So when you, when you type, um, open your browser and type whatever you want to type, that request you're making will contain um, all this information we already mentioned. And when that um, server gets that request, it sends a response, and that response contains some additional information about um, the response from the server. All right, let's look at um, let's look at an, an example of a HTTP request header. So um, this is what happens. So when I just write call minus v and then my IP address, what is going to display is just uh, my port or my IP address. And it tells me the location and the port I'm using and um, what other information it gives is um, it tells me the, the user agent and also it tells me the HTTP um, response code like um, 200 means okay um, also gives additional information about the date I, um, I made that request and the date normally comes in GMT Greenwich Meridian time okay and also gives additional information about the server I use. So if I use Nginx, it's going to specify Nginx. If I use a Unix system, it's going to specify whether I use a Unix or a Windows or um, a Linux. So what all those kind of um, information, additional information is what is contained in a HTTP request header. Now let's practicalize that. So I'll just get my IP address. And I'll try to display a HTTP um, request header. So to do that, I'll just do call um, minus V and my IP address. 
and right there you see that I have um, information additional information about my request um, my request says um, this is my IP address and listening to port 80 and then my host name the agent I use was called and the request was okay and the server I use in um, carrying out that request is is nginx and then the date I carried out that request um, 9th of July 2023 and then the time I carried out that request was um, the time I carried the request is also displayed here all right the content of the request is uh, so the content length is 313 sorry and other informations that um, just gives us um, basic idea of what our request was all right that's all about um, HTTP um, request header now let's look at HTTP um, response header header sorry the HTTP response header upon um, so when you send the request to your server um, your server when you receives that request the web server will send an HTTP response header back to the client and that HTTP response header includes information in a text record form that a web server, uh, server transmit back to the client's browser okay and we said the response headers um, should contain particulars such as the type and date and size of the file sent back to the server as well as information regarding the server so the response header will just is just coming from the server so the response just when i send the request the server sends back a response and this response is supposed to contain additional information about the request the request i made okay now let's see an example of how to get the response header so we say when you call silently and you display the head of um, your looker your ip address sorry um, this is going to show you um, 200 response code 200 which means okay the date you carried out that request and then the server that you use in carrying out that request just similar to the, the request header but this time is coming from this web server all right let's see how we can practicalize that again i just get my ip address i clear my screen and i'll call this time around i want to get um, the response header so I will do call uh, minus s silently just grab the head of everything information and my IP address comes there my IP address comes there and when I call um, this time around the, the response is coming from the server and the server is nginx and it tells you the operating system you are using so I'm using Ubuntu 20 and then the response was okay 200 and then um, the date i called that request the content length and also the date connection type and all that extra information so this is what we call http response and request header files there are other types of header um, http headers um, let's look at some others but for the video our focus will be on http um, response headers so we also have http general header and these headers just contain directives that needs to be followed so when you have directives that needs to be followed for both the requester and the receiver like so this this can include information regarding the caching directives um specified connection options the date the pragma an upgrade and every other thing else so when you have directives to be followed by your browser and your server um, you use you refer to that as the HTTP general header all right the next kind of header we have is the HTTP entity header and we say that these headers include information regarding so they include information extra information regarding the method supported by the identified resource and the content encoding the content language the content location the content length and also um, these headers check for the integrity of the message upon receive and we said the content range also is displayed in the http entity header and when it expires it also shows you that when it when it was last modified so it gives you all this extra information um, in the http entity header so so far we've seen um, http requests 
header so we have http response header and we have http general header and we have http entity header so these are just some of the um, numerous types of headers http headers that we have now let's um let's carry out an exercise and see if we truly understand http headers now the first task says um, we should configure web 2 to be identical with web 1 and fortunately we've built a batch script for that so um, all we need to do is just to ensure that web 2 is um, similar with web 1 what it means is that um, you are supposed to install nginx in web 2 we are supposed to create um, an index page that says hello world we're supposed to carry out the redirection and we're also supposed to create a custom um, error page for that but first things first create um, a file called web 01 so that i can just log in into my web 01 if, um, without typing so many commands so i'll just create a file for that um, this vi web 01 and in it i will just um, put these commands so the first command um, this is just to help me log into my server i said setting up my ssh agent you can use the eval command to do that and you specify the path to your identity file it means just specify where your identity file is located so if your identity file is in the root directory um, in the hidden dot ssh um, directory you can just specify so if your identity file i mean your private key just tell us the location of the private key and not necessary in the root so wherever it is just put there and the ip address for my web server one is um, this so i'll just save this I'll just save this and make it executable. Mm, that's X, okay. Wait. All right, I'll create another file. So I have another file, um, web01 is there. So I'll just copy the content of web01 into web02. I'll just call it web02. All I need to do is just to change the IP address. So I have web02 there. Sorry. Wait a minute. Um, so copy the content of web01 into web02. Okay, wrong command is cp hyphen r web01 web02. Okay. So you discover that I have two um, scripts. And I'll now, the next thing I do is just go back to the tax and request for a new server. So I'll just go back to the tax and request for a new server too. So up here, I'll just ask for a new server. So it says right here that um, the new server has been created. Next thing I will ensure that my server is running. So I have to ensure that my server is running or else I will have um, connection closed or all these kind of error messages. Okay, all I do is just refresh my page go back down to it, it says pending, refresh again and you can see right there that it says running so just refresh your page and ensure that your server is running next thing I'll do is just copy my IP address and go back to the script so I'll just go back into web2 and just replace that with my IP address web02 vi rather okay yeah, so I have this series of commands. All I need to do is just to replace this IP address. So I'll just quickly do that. And you see that I have the IP address on my web too. Next um, step to follow is now I have to log in into my web 2 so that i can configure it to be similar with web 1 remember i said what it means is that you need to install nginx in it you need to create an index page that says hello world and you also need to carry out directions and error custom error pages so i'll just um what i need to do is just run the script and i'll be able to log into my web server too okay yeah put in my passphrase 
I'll click yes. All right, now I'm in my web server to display my screen. And I'm supposed to configure this web server to be similar with web server one. Now, because I wouldn't want to write all the steps of um, installing Nginx, carrying out hello world, and also redirections and the rest, I'll just come to my GitHub and get this um, this file called for not found because it contains all those instructions in it. And you can see right here that it contains instructions for installing Nginx. So this right here just installs Nginx, and this here just creates the uh, the hello world page for you. And um, and then to perform a redirection, this script um, command here performs the redirection for me. And regarding error pages, so this is how um, you carry out your error page. And then the next thing for you to do is to test your file. So these instructions are in this script. Just here back in my web server, what I need to do is just to create a script and put in those commands. So um, to do that, I'll just use sudo privileges and the name of that script should be, um, let's call it um, web02 installations. Okay. So just call it web02 anything, it's fine. Okay, I'll just put in those commands. Like I earlier explained, the commands are just to install Nginx right from here. You can see it. So I'll just install Nginx using the sudo command and carry out um, hello world index page and then perform a permanently move redirection. And because I want um, everybody to be re redirected to my GitHub page, so Whatever URL you want the redirections to occur, you just put it there. So for me, I just use my um, GitHub. And the next thing is just to create a custom error page. And this command just carries, um, performs that for you. So in case you don't understand the commands in my previous video on uh, web servers, I clearly explained, uh, vividly explained all that there. So without wasting much time, I'll just save this and exit. And um, you discover that I have a file there. I'll make it executable. Um, sudo um, chmod. Let's change the mode to allow all users to execute the script. And the name of the script is web. All right. And when I ls, I discover that the script is executable. And I'll just run the command, run the script and it will perform all the installations for me and configure my web server 2 to be similar to web server 1. So without wasting time, you just configure your web server 2 to be similar with web server 1. So after installing the packages, I tested the script because the commands were in the script. I tested my configuration files and it says that the test is successful. All right, let's experiment and see if our web server two is similar to web server one. I'll just copy the IP address of my web server one and see if it's going to print hello world, open a new page and just type in um, my web, my IP address. And it says right there, hello world. Okay, let's test that also for web server two. Open a new browser, go back to the project and get my IP address for web server 2 and right here just paste it and you can see hello world there too all right so web server 1 is similar to web server 2 in terms of index pages now let's try about um, redirections so for you to carry out a redirection all you need to do is just to um, type in your IP address again and this time around, the name of the redirect um, file, redirection file is called redirect, redirect underscore me. And when I put it there, you discover that it's going to redirect me to whatever URL I have um, assigned it to redirect to. All right, so whatever your redirection is taking you, whether your YouTube page, um, what your blog, your browser, your website, wherever it's taking you, just put it there in the script. 
Alright, let's test um, Web Server 2 if it's going to redirect us to um, yeah, whether the redirection was um, so I'll insert the um, IP address of my Web Server 2 in the same method just write redirect redirect me underscore me and see if it's going to redirect us alright, the redirection was successful the next thing we are supposed to do is to create an error page Let's see if Web Server 1 has an error page. All right, just go back to my browser. I'll get the IP address of my Web Server 1. And on the new page, I just type that and just type um, forward slash, a forward slash and whatever page I like. Because this page is not created or has not been created, it will tell you that, um, yeah, this page is not found. So this is like custom error page. So you just see this. Um, let's try that with web server 2 um, get my IP address for web server 2 on a new page I just type that and whatever page whatever I like just type that and you discover that the page is not found so the page I'm looking for is not found and that's the French way of saying it and that's how you carry out um, custom error page redirection on index pages alright so so far our web server one is similar to web server two um, one important thing you need to do is that the pop the public key for the alx project so you go back to your ssh project and just get the public key from tax three i think yeah if i'm correct so just get the public key from tax three and put it in your web server two remember you did that for your web server one you should ensure you do it for your web server two I discovered that I have one script for when I ls minus a shows me all the hidden files and directory. So I'm just going to go into the ssh directory cd dot ssh, and in there I will discover that I have a file called authorized keys. I will just sudo vi and put in the alx public key, and um, so this here is the public key of the providers of the server. So you see right there it says the ALX applicant server. And this one right here is my public key, your personal public key. Then the next one I'm going to insert is going to be um, ALX public key. Just go to the end of the file and just paste in the new key that I copied. All right, so I'll just save that and exit. And um, next thing I need to do is to perform what we call HTTP um, response header. So the next um, um, requirement we need to do is, um, since we've been able to successfully um, ensure that Web Server 2 um, is identical with Web Server 1, um, the next thing we need to do is that since we have been, since we are placing our Web Server behind a load balancer in this project, uh, we need to add a custom Nginx um, response header so I'll just create a file that will be able to carry out the custom header page but before then let's go into the um, let's go into the etc directory um, nginx and um, sites available and see what it's there before we make the changes sites enable sorry all right list and I'll just do sudo vi default all right, so this is what this is what it will look like. So our aim is just to create our aim is just to create um, a header response HTTP response header file, and we are going to write it under the server name. So under this location block called server name, that's where our response will come. All right, let's see how we can implement that. So I'll just quit this. So to implement a HTTP response header, what I need to do is just to create a script to be able to carry out those um, commands. So I'll just create a script and call it vi custom whatever name HTTP. Okay. Now imagine I go to a restaurant and I order chicken and chips. Um, for me to be able to um know who served me that chicken and chip i can just ask for the chef name so this this is what we're trying to similarly this is what we're trying to do we want to 
see the name of the server that is giving us um, that page at that moment so to do that i will just use um yeah let me just start with the comment and say um custom http um header yeah response header sorry all right yeah there's some comments to tell me what i'm doing so i'm going to use the sudo set command and search for this string um the string is um the server name so i'll look for the server name underscore name there's a space there's an underscore and a forward slash so after that line you append this to it so i'll say add header and then the name of the header i want to add it's like a custom header so i can say um chicken and chips served by but for this project the tag say we should use x served by So you can use x served by and then the name of the host or the name of the chef that served you that um, chicken and chips so for this we set the host name of the server so it's supposed to display the host name of the server and on when we're done with that we need to specify the parts to that file we want to make changes to so we said etc um, nginx and on the sites enabled okay and the name of the file is called default yeah i hope my spellings and commands are correct all right so the next thing i do after making changes to a configuration file is to test for syntax error so just text for syntax errors and to do that we say you do sudo nginx minus t and lastly when you make conf changes to your configurations you need to restart that um, service so we said um, restart after making changes and to do that it's um, sudo service nginx um, restart yeah okay everything looks fine so I'll just save the file and exit I'll just save that file and exit. Um, the next thing I need to do is to make it executable so that I can be able to run it. And to do that, I'll do sudo um, chmod, make everybody execute the file and um, custom the name of the file. And uh, my script is now executable. Yeah, before we implement these changes, we'll just, just take a look at what we are trying to do. So we'll go to the etc. And nginx and um, sites enabled, and we we'll do sudo vi default. And let's see, let's see the so let's have a look at the file we are trying to implement. Okay, this one with our script is come is going to search into this um, file and for this string called server underscore name space underscore. It's going to look for this um, word. And under it is going to write a new um, instructions for that. So let's go and execute our script and see if that works out fine. Okay. So um, to do that, I'll just um, run the name of the script and custom. So I'll just go back to where the script is located and um, ls and discover the script is here. I'll just execute it. And it's going to make those changes to the file. If I want to reconfirm what I did, just cd back into the etc and nginx sites enabled and um, ls and then I'll sudo vi my default file to see that the changes have been implemented. Okay, if you look closely right here, you will see that the implementation was correct. Yeah, but because we want everything to be uniform, um, let's just go to line 52. Yeah, so the implementation was carried out in line 52. But let's just make everything uniform. So I'll just go to line 52, um, 52. And I'll just add a tab there so that everything stays in the same line or on the same line. 
all right so the implementation was done so you can see right here that uh, my host name is this so when you just write use the variable host name it's going to display the host name of that server all right um i'll save the script yeah i'll just clear my screen and next thing i need to do is just to ensure that um, everything was carried out correctly uh, let me just restart my nginx again sudo service nginx restart okay all right all right let's practicalize what we've done i'll just exit or log out whichever you prefer to use so i'll just log out from my web server too and try to perform um to practicalize that so um, what we do is just to use the command to browse on your command line which is call and we call that silently and just get the every information about the head and our ip address and then since we are looking for x served by so we want to know which uh, of the server is responding to our rest request so we we'll use grep to find that um, keyword called x served by so to do that, I will just get the IP address of my web tool because I just performed um, those instructions on my web tool. Just get the, my IP address, go back to my sandbox and um, I'll just do call and minus S capital I and my IP address comes in there. And because I'm looking, there's a space, I pipe it and I'm looking for um, grep, I'm looking for X um save by um capital by so when i run that it's going to print out the name of the server that is responding to my request so you can see right here saying s saved by um web server 2 and that's the id of web server 2 so i can similarly i can just say um my chicken and chips were served to me by this so so and so so chef all right that's just the basic um, definition of that so we're going to carry out these implementations too on web server one. So I'll just clear my screen and go to web server one. Um, this is my web server one. I'll just run that script we created earlier and it's going to log me in into my web server one. All right, just put in my passphrase and um, I'm logged in into my web server one. I'll clear my screen. Next thing I need to do is to create um the same script that uh, performed that tax and whatever the name of the script is is not a problem as long as the right commands are in the script i can just do um custom yeah custom http header all right so let's use this and my first line is supposed to be um a comment yeah, not necessary, but since I want to know what I'm doing, I'll just document that and say, okay, um, custom, um, HTTP header. All right. And we said we'll use the command, um, sudo said minus I. And what we are searching for is, um, the string called server underscore name and we said there's a space there there's an underscore and the forward slash after that this is going to append our script uh, append our string sorry and our string says add underscore header so that's just the name and um the header we want to add is called x saved by so we want to know who is saving us this website now and we'll just use a variable called hostname, capitas, hostname. And it's going to tell us the name of the server. So um, we'll end that string there. And we are supposed to specify the path to that file we want to edit, ed, edit sorry. So the path to the file is etc, um, nginx, nginx. And the name of that directory is sites enabled. And the name of that file is called default dot okay and the next thing we need to do after making um corrections to your 
um, default file. What you need to do is to test for syntax errors. So I'll just do test for syntax errors. And to test for syntax errors, we say sudo um, nginx minus t or hyphen t. So to test for syntax errors, we say sudo nginx and minus t test for the configurations file. And we are done making um, additions to your configurations file. The next thing you need to do is just to restart. Restart the config files okay whatever comment you decide to use that's fine um got the wrong config okay so just restart is um sudo nginx um the name of the service i want to restart is nginx yeah sudo service sorry nginx and i will say restart so the, the script is going to implement this test if our file is correct and now when it's done it's going to restart it so i'm just going to save that and exit so i'll just save and exit so the next thing i need to do is just to make the script executable to do that i'll just do sudo change the mode um change the mode so that everyone else can execute this script called custom and um, my script is not executable um if you want to confirm you can just go into nginx and see what you've done but i'll just try to run it since we've done since we've practicalized that aspect of uh, checking before making um additions all right so i run the script and it says my script has run successfully so it says right here that my test was successful um just to be sure again I'll just go into the etc directory and um, see if everything there is correct. All right, um, site enabled, um, site enabled, okay. And um, yeah, I'll just ls and just do sudo use super privileges to be able to edit that file. Sudo vi and the name of the file is default. And I'll just go into it and you see right here on line 50, yeah set numbers let's see the line yeah everything works fine but line 52 is not properly arranged so i'll just um go to line 52 52 and just add a tab there so that everything becomes uniform all right so this is how you carry out http response header um just write the directive and the custom header is going to be x served by. So if I want this to display um, chicken and chips served by um, chef this or chef that, all I need to do is just this place, I'll just put chicken and chips served by. So, but because the tax requirements say it's going to be x served by, that's why it's x served by. And then the host name is your web server one. Yeah, so you can just put a variable and put capital letters uppercase host name and it's going to display the host name for you um so that's the host name for my web server one next thing i need to do is just save the script and just ensure that i restart my nginx so that the implementations that i carried out will be effective so i'll do sudo service although it's in the script but um it's not wrong if you do it again so we said sudo service um nginx um restart all right, let's um, log out from our send our web server. Um, let log out from your web web server and just go back to your sandbox. Um, let's see if what we have carried out will be implemented. So we said call our minus i s capital i and our IP address. So I'll just get to the project and get the IP address for my web server one get that down come back to my terminal and paste that and because we are looking for grep so grep is used to find find some couple of strings or numbers whatever you're looking for you use grep so what we are looking for is x saved by so this is what we are looking for f x saved by 
all right let's run that and see so you can discover here that uh, the response when you call when you make a request to your server your rec your server now um, gave you a response that oh um, this is who is serving you the web um, page you're looking for so this is web one serving us um, let's try that again for web let's try that again for web two and you can see that um, web two is the one serving us this website and just to play around with it so you can just put in your IP address for your web servers different web servers and see the response you get so that's how you carry out the custom um, HTTP response all right for the next task for the next task what we need to do is to create a script and write all the instructions or the commands we have done so far so I'll just create a script um, let me clear the screen um, the name of the script is vi0 and then the name of the script and in it, I'm just going to write all the commands I've carried out so far. So I'm going to specify um, the interpreter to use for the script. Um, I say I'll use my user directory um, under the bin directory. Yeah, under that environment, I'll just use the bash script to interpret the script. And the first thing I need, the second line must be a comment. And what I'm going to do is to say configuring. Yeah, configuring um, web 0 to configuring web 0 01 um, to have, have a response. Yeah, to have to have an HTTP response header, okay? All right, that's fine, whatever, response not correct. Yeah, whatever I decide to use, that's fine. So it's a comment, it's not a rule. Okay, configuring web server 01 to have an HTTP response header, okay? Now, the next thing I need to do, remember the first command we did was to use sudo and we said, let's update our packages whenever we want to install something. So you, whenever you want to make installations, always good practice to update your packages first. Update, update. And the next thing we need to do is to install Nginx in web server 2 and we say the command was um, sudo apt whether sudo apt get or sudo apt swine sudo apt get um, install and because it's going to run automatically let's put um, the flag yes so that whatever installations whatever installations needs to be carried out will be performed automatically and we said minus y will do that so what are we installing in the next um yeah i like to put the comment to that um updating packages so I can just say um, updating packages. Okay, so updating packages before making my installations. The next thing I need to do is um, the next thing I did was just to customize um, Web Server two so that it becomes um, exactly like Web Server one. And we did um, we use echo and we said hello world hello world with an exclamation and we use um, a pipe and we said sudo privileges um, to append that into this script um, and the script is located in this var directory um, where web servers are being saved or web pages are being saved the world wide web and html page directory sorry and the name of that file is called index.html. All right, the next thing we did, um, let me just add a comment to that. So I'll just say, um, creating, yeah, just creating, creating an index page. Index page, okay, that's just a comment so that I know what I'm doing. I hope my spellings are correct all right the next thing we did was to create 
a perform a redirection and we said to do that we said so the next thing was to carry out a redirection i would say um i'm performing a redirection performing a redirection okay and we did that by using um a variable name called um so let me just change my variable name and call it new string and in it i will just um, put in the new string and i'm saying look for this page called server name server underscore name um there's a space there's an underscore that's the word you're looking for and after that word i'm just go to a new line and to do that i'll just do a backward slash n and then i can put the rewrite rule then um after you go to a new line i put a new tab to that then i can do the rewrite rule for redirection rewrite so whatever um page i want to insert in this i'll just insert that and for me i because i want to write the forward slash i need to put the backward slash to escape that and i say you can redirect me that's the name of the file and to this url so i used my Git, github account here okay yeah so whatever you want to use whatever you want to redirect your clients or your um clients to yeah whatever you want to redirect your clients to just indicate that there because i want to write the forward slash i put the backward slash because i want to write another forward slash i put the backward slash and because this is going to go to my github and next thing is just to complete the url and backward slash to escape a forward slash and let's go all right um because this is going to be a permanent redirection or a 301 redirection i'll just put permanent put permanent yeah so i spelled that wrong and permanent okay when i'm done i'll just end that directive and put in next thing i need to do is to fit this string into um, a particular section of the code or the file and to do that i'll do sudo um set is going to look for this particular string called um so it's going to look for this particular string called um so it's look, going to look for this string called server underscore name space underscore and in it after it is going to append this um, variable i created called new string yeah so whatever works for you just do that all we're doing is just to try to um insert this into our configuration file so when i'm done with that i'll just end that and specify the parts to the file i want to make edit and i say the part to that file is in etc for slash um in the next and then sites enabled i think sites enabled um default so this is the script that will make um a web server two similar with web server one because we carried out index pages on web server one we also carried out redirection and now we want to see how we can carry out um, error pages so this script is going to make um web server two similar with web server one so i'll just say creating creating custom error page okay yeah whatever is your comment so um to do that i'll just do echo um the custom error page i'll just get that from the project just um, paste it there so that i don't have spelling errors so i'll just paste it and i put a pipe to that and i'll use sudo and this text is going to be inserted into this part called um vr um ww and then under the directory html and then the name of that file is supposed to be for for um dot html okay the next thing i do after creating this file is to now put my response header um so i will just put um custom um, http 
press close header okay it's going to come here we said it was um sudo sudo said and minus i and then i put in my string and then the strings to look out for is called server underscore name there's a space there's an underscore and there's a forward slash and after that it's going to append whatever i'm going to write and the, cu the custom header is called add header and then it's going to specify um, by saying x um saved save file okay and then my host name i put a variable to that and this is capital host name okay and then i need to specify this string that I want to insert, I need to specify the path to it. And we said the path is under the etc um, nginx and um, site enabled. And it's under a file called default. Okay. Yeah, after making changes to my file, what I need to do as good practice is test for test for syntax error syntax so i'll just check for syntax errors and to do that you do sudo nginx minus t next thing you need to do after making changes to your configuration file is to restart the service so i will do restart nginx to do that um, the command is sudo service nginx um, restart or reload whichever you prefer to use okay um, this is just a repetition of all the commands or the um, processes we've carried out I think the best thing to do is just to get your the script for your web server 404 error page and just put it here the only thing that is different here is this line that we added to it so everything was just a repetition of your web server project tax 4 that had to do with um, error pages so what you need to do just you just copy it and just include this in it so that when you run the script it's going to um it's going to affect all these um instructions in your web server too so that's the main thing here is just this other line we added to it so let's um save this file and exit all right let's make let's make our script executable okay um to do that um chmod um, plus x and the name of the file is zero okay next thing is just to git add and git commit and git push okay um git add zero and um git commit yeah whatever message you feel like i think that's supposed to be small m um custom http response header okay yeah that's what we just did and um when you're done just git push and okay whatever the error message is um to yeah just put it back into the trash can so just run this command yeah and i've successfully added my my script i'll just go and just check if what i've done is correct yeah maybe some minor errors but everything should work fine all right everything works fine there so in case you've carried out these um, instructions and you see having errors yeah by experience i think the most important thing that makes um your codes to have errors is just maybe syntax errors and spelling errors so just try and just um review your codes and see where you've gotten the commands wrong yeah most 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 of the time is um syntax errors so just try and check that and if you still have errors you can put that on the comment sections let's see if i can help you out with that so we've come to the end of this um video yeah i would like to discuss about um how to install load balancer 
and also how to perform um, custom HTTP header with Puppet in the next video. So just subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that when I make um, videos and post them, you'll be notified. Until next time, good luck with your projects. And the important thing is not about the checkers. The important thing is to understand what you're doing. So until next time, see you in the next video.